Ho 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 ho! And welcome back to another day on TriHack Me. We're gonna talk about Advent of Cyber 2023. It is day four today. We got another brute force scenario, I think it was. Yes, here it is. The machine has already started, and today we're gonna learn about basically two new tools. We're gonna use Kiel, 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 however you're gonna pronounce that. Cool is a <coughs> word list generator. The great thing about Cool is that it can generate word lists uh, from a website. So it can scan the actual website and pull out information. So you tell Cool, now you're gonna scan to a certain depth, right? And <clears throat> you're gonna generate passwords within the maximum amount of characters of that. And then you can put on some different kind of flags to it so it only generate lowercase or with numbers and so on. Let's scroll down and take a look at that tool. Cool is right here. And you can basically go ahead and type keel or cool, whatever you're gonna type, tag H, and then there are different kind of flags, arguments, whatever you're gonna call it. You can go ahead and supply with that command. If you don't have it installed, you know, fear not, there's already a command here on TriHackMe's really wonderful tutorial you can go ahead and check out and then just run that and get that installed but is it it is shipped with linux kaylee at least in the newer versions you could of course go ahead and run it like that and then you can save the output to the file like that and so on so i really suggest you go ahead and check it out and read the different kind of specifications and try running different commands here also you can go ahead and check out why cool it's word generator you compared to other tools available Let's say while many tools rely on predefined lists or common dictionary text, cool creates custom word list based on the web page content. Here is why cool stands for. So based on the web page content. Now sometimes that is not a bad idea to do that because sometimes creators of a website, a web page, if you have the idea that they created their password in a certain way, well, definitely gonna use cool. In this particular task, we're gonna go ahead and use cool and the command we will run in the end, I think it's the, um, let's see, create the word list called usernames, and we're gonna create one called passwords. So we're gonna create two different word lists in the end. So we're gonna say, cool, please generate a word list depth of two, the uh, maximum uh, M. Go ahead and scroll up here, and you can go ahead and check out what the M is for if you are not sure. It's the minimum word length. So you can basically just read right there, default three. Scroll down one more time. And now that we know the M is for minimum, we can see that, oh, oh yeah, it is. So the five, five, and so on, no more, no less than five. Save it into this file, scan this IP, use numbers. Let's go ahead and take this right here. Go to a terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and create a directory called Day four, just you know, for today. Let's go ahead and run this command right here. Also, let's go ahead and run the other command right here, cool command. And that is again cool. The depth of zero, so just a base scan. Minimum length of five. Now, if you know, got a hunch that they use the password length minimum five, which is really small, they're gonna set to five, save in usernames, and you're gonna use that from the team. So this is a, a directed, you know, you, you, you say like that page only, which is why it's depth of zero. So the page of teams might contain some very interesting information about emails and so on, names, and people have a tendency to create passwords based on the email and names or stuff like that. So that is the general idea behind it. Let's go ahead and copy paste it correctly. Copy paste. And let's put it in. And now we have two files. We can go ahead and check out the size. We can see that it's the passwords is a bit larger and username is a bit slower and lower means because we probably need more passwords. We can go ahead and just say hit, for example, to see the top part of the pass password list. And then we can see there are many different kinds of passwords we can go ahead and use, and they're really good. So the next tool we're gonna use 
is a tool called WFAST. Now, that is a tool designed for brute forcing web applications. You can also go ahead and use the tool called Hyper, which is also a tool you can brute force with. We used that yesterday, but today we're going to use the one called WFAST. Okay, so checking out the command, it basically says, if we have any uh, argument explanation, you can go ahead and check it out. Let's just see if we have that. We do not. So in order for us to understand the arguments, we probably have to go ahead and look it up. Um, down here below, we can see that there are some different kind of explanations. For example, we can see that the C right there is the file name that loads the username list. And we can see, for example, that the the C file comma password is going to be where we will load the list generated by cool. And we can see that the tech is HS, I think it was, it is, it hides responses containing this string. Please enter the correct credentials. Now in, in Hydra, if you remember that from yesterday, we had this um, quotation mark command where we had the path of slash login whatever dot php and then a colon and then after that we supplied wrong password or bad combination whatever uh, error and um, the application is going to give you back it's going to ignore that and keep going this is kind of the same so we're going to stick to that the tag u probably going to be the ul and the tag d provide the post data where we're going to go ahead and fast so that's going to be this ul here and the post data is going to be these two variables called username and password. So if you go ahead and check out the IP, let's go ahead and open that right now. Right there. You can see that this is the actual web page. And they talked about the one called slash login. Let's just go ahead and type that slash login at PHP. And here we can see that there is a username and a password. Now, if you go ahead and right click that, and say view page source, and you zoom in a bit, go to the form, where it is, there we go, there, the form, you can see that it's a method called post, which is why I need the post method. You're gonna see the action is sending the data to the login page.php. And we can see that the first input name, the name of that, and the name of the password is named username and password, which is the variable names sent to the backend which is why I need to supply the names like that. So what we should do now is go ahead and copy paste this command right here. Go to the terminal. Let me just clear the screen for you. Paste it in and run it. Running this command here will then execute all the commands. You're gonna see it's blinking on the screen. And at some point it's gonna end up and give us the right answer. Or you say the combination of username and password. I don't know how long this is going to run, but we can go ahead and check it out. So it says the login portal application located there. Use the credentials we got from the brute force attack to log into the application. When we've done that, done that, we can go ahead and supply the username and the password and find the flag on the application. Let's check it out. So it would seem that this is probably the one. Let's see colon, if I'm reading this correctly, and happiness, let's copy paste that in. And then now let's go to the login page, paste the username in, and take the password, submit it, don't save that. And just check out wherever they put the flag, send, no, draft, spam, trash, compose. It's a bit slow. Oh, we can read it. There we have it. Kevin North Pole, confidential message. There we have the flag. The flag is just an actual proof that we actually clicked something and we did something. So we're gonna give it the flag right there and the task. And really, that is what this is all about. So let's recap this just for a bit. Brute forcing web application can be a challenge. Brute forcing a web application with a login formula that consists of a username and a password can be even bigger challenge. Yesterday, we brute forced a pin code up to like three characters. 
which is a lot easier to do because you have a guaranteed success within a few minutes. That's more like a 100% success rate. In this particular case, you need to be really lucky in order to guess the right username and the right password. Okay, so this was just a session, a lesson in how to do something with different kinds of tools. So if you want to be really good at this, you know, go ahead and try out more rooms. Go ahead and try web enumeration room as they originally also said right here. Go ahead and try more rooms on Try Hack Me and get a better penetration tester out of yourself. Okay, so we're going to see you again next day, tomorrow, for day five. It's going to be the last. Ho, 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 ho. Thank you.